Today we have Jeff Chan on the show, also known as MMA Shredded, a professional MMA fighter who specializes in striking but is also a Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. I'm way heavier than him and size does matter in Jiu-Jitsu. Although I do put it on Jeff, don't get it twisted, Jeff has some very impressive ground skills to go along with his high level striking. Before we start breaking down the role, I just wanted to let everyone know, Jeff and I are hosting a training retreat in Vietnam in October of this year. Jeff will be teaching striking and I'll be teaching grappling. This is the perfect opportunity to train with some of your favorite online instructors, visit an incredible country, and enjoy a well-deserved traincation. Visit the link in the description to learn more. Jeff does a great job winning the grip fight by controlling my wrists and moving them to the outside to provide unobstructed access to my hips. I could possibly have sprawled to counter the double leg, but I believe in my guillotine. And because Jeff shot to my far hip, there was more time between the shot and actually getting there for me to react. Shooting for the far hip also provides me access for my right arm to get underneath his neck, where my guillotine is much more effective compared to my left arm if you were to shoot to my near hip. As we land, I'm unable to establish a guard with my legs. Jeff landed exactly how he should to shut down my guillotine, but I'm crafty and spin on the ball of my back so I can re-establish a guard, so I can use my legs to help me finish the choke. There are multiple ways to position your legs to finish a guillotine and what's more so important rather than specific grips is that you're controlling their mobility using your legs, which I do by hooking my right instep onto his leg and positioning my left leg over his body. This will prevent him from jumping to the other side of my legs to defend where he was previously. To finish, I'm pulling my wrist into the soft part of his neck where the carotid artery is located. I'm also pressing my right bicep into his head to push his head inward, which pushes the soft part of his neck into my wrist. It's a dual motion for maximum force. Jeff does a great job winning the grip fight again, taking inside position with his right arm and his head, which leaves me exposed to a single leg takedown on my left leg. I fake a shot and Jeff sprawls. This could have been a great opportunity for Jeff to reshoot on me off my abandoned takedown which is a strategy I often employ to hit takedowns. Jeff faints and gets a slight reaction from me, but I try to be disciplined to not bite on faints because they can leave you out of position. I break Jeff's grip using my knee. I use what I had available. And now that Jeff's head is out of position, I snatch up his neck for the front headlock. This is proper head positioning using the head to frame. And this is improper head positioning and I took advantage of it. With the front headlock, I drag Jeff down to the ground. Because I'm connected to him, he will go where I go. I could try to finish from here, but instead push off the mat with my left foot and lift him with my right butterfly hook. You can use this motion to enter into mounted guillotines or the inverted front headlock. I use it to enter into the inverted front headlock, which is the front headlock where both our hips are facing the sky. I lift my legs to try to push Jeff's right arm across his body to enter into an anaconda choke, like you see me do here. Doing so takes away your opponent's ability to flare their elbow to defend, and you can keep your leg there to finish for even better control. But I don't manage to move Jeff's arm all the way across his body and he gets to his knees. So instead, I try to enter into the mounted army and guillotine but Jeff inserts his shin between us and uses it as a short frame to prevent mounts. Frames beat inside position and that frame prevents me from taking inside position with my legs. I fall back to my guard and as I do, I insert my arm deeper all the way around his neck for an arm out guillotine. This style of arm out guillotine is very similar to a rear naked choke, except for from the front rather than the back. It's a very powerful guillotine and doesn't require as much finesse compared to other styles of guillotines. This video is sponsored by X Marshall. I absolutely love their gear. I love their rash guards, but I'm completely in love with their shorts. They're not too short. They're not too long. They're not restrictive, yet they're not baggy either. They show off my thick thighs and give you all the style points that you need. Not only that, but they also support your favorite Jitsu creators and what other Jitsu brand is doing that. High quality and thoughtful design go into every product that they make. If you're looking for some high quality no-gi gear, x Marshall should be your first choice. Pick up a Limitless or T-Rex Arms rash guard or any of their stylish designs. And make sure to use my discount code JORDAN10 for 10% off your order. We start on the feet and again, Jeff takes some good head positioning and snatches up my neck. 
I try to fight the hands, but Jeff drags me down the same way that I did to him earlier. If Jeff had more weight on me, my counter would likely be a peek out. A move that I also like to do to escape Darces. But Jeff was too quick and he starts to take my back. Watch how I also try to catch his leg with my arm, but I missed. If I would have caught it, it would prevent Jeff from taking my back and give me a grip to wrestle him with. To counter Jeff's back take, I simply hide my back on the mat by doing a front roll, while in the process also trying to enter into a leg lock. Jeff retreats and my goal now is to keep his feet off the mat so that he can't get up. He can't stand up without his feet on the mat. I think about passing with an over underpass, but end up passing with more of a non-pressure based double underpass. I control his legs for the same reason, so he can't put his feet on the mat and potentially wrestle me down. I try to hit a rolling back attack but I fail, as I'm unable to hook my right instep onto his calf and it slips off his leg. This is what I was trying to do and notice how it was successful because I managed to hook my instep onto his leg. I start thinking about a leg lock but come up to pass instead. My objective is to keep his feet off of me, as feet are grips and the grip fight is important in all aspects of jujitsu. Keeping his feet off of me prevents him from getting a real guard and I execute a leg drag, but because Jeff is able to get to his knees, I'm unable to consolidate a pass. But his back is exposed as a result and I start to transition to back control. I have a top hook but not a bottom hook, so I execute a chair sit back take which is a useful technique to insert a bottom hook but also to enter into submissions. I am able to hook my inner elbow onto Jeff's wrist which is the end of the lever and makes it easier to extend his arm. I get the tap and we start again. I have a wrestling for Jiu Jitsu course coming out very soon with former D1 wrestler Joseph Bresa who is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to wrestling. This role I did with Jeff is almost 2 years old and my wrestling has improved significantly from binge watching Joseph's channel. He's going to provide the wrestling aspect and I'm going to provide the jujitsu aspect. I'm super stoked and make sure to sign up for my newsletter to keep up to date with its release. Jeff shoots again to my right hip although this time it's my near side hip as I'm stepping forward with my right leg which again allows me to lock up the front headlock on my strong side, my right arm. I sit to my butt and into my guard to finish, but because I try to provide variety and I like going path least resistance, I transition to an omoplata. As I do, I hook my right instep onto his leg to gain even better control, but I lose it and Jeff does a front roll to escape the omoplata, but it's out of the furnace and into the fire as I answer his counter with a counter of my own with the armbar. Jeff sits to his guard and does a great job controlling my wrist and using it to hit an arm drag. To counter, I raise my posture to keep my torso further away from Jeff so he can't take my back. A scramble ensues and now to win the scramble, I prioritize keeping my hips higher than Jeff's hips as well as my weight above Jeff. A powerful concept for winning scrambles is to bring your hips higher than your opponent's hips. I control Jeff's legs again to again keep his feet off of me and prevent grips and watch how Jeff is circling his legs to rid himself of my grips. I mention often that angles beat frames, but angles also beat grips. Jeff takes connection with his right foot on my hip. He's using it to frame to keep me away. So I change the direction of that frame by pushing it to the side and hitting a leg drag slash Toriando pass. As I drop down, Jeff looks like he's thinking about a Kimura on my right arm, but because I'm cupping his shoulder, he'd likely only be able to loop in his right arm, but not be able to grab my wrist with his left arm and bend my arm to a 90 degree angle. So he abandons his attempt, but he shouldn't have left his right arm behind my head and torso. Instead, he should be looking to bring it in front of my torso to gain control of the inside space and start looking for inside position grips. I bury my head by his armpit to prevent him from bringing his elbow back to his torso where he'd be safe. And now before putting on any squeeze, I wait for a good bite on the choke. I wiggle my right arm to position my bicep deeper onto his neck. Now that I have a good bite, I can squeeze. There was no point in wasting energy before taking a good bite. A good choke bite means your opponent's neck is positioned as close to the pivot point of what you're choking them with, similar to cutting with scissors. We start again and I'm getting pretty tired. We had already done 3 high paced rounds of MMA before this jiu jitsu round. 
Now a skill in itself is trying to remain technically sound while having very little in the tank. I sit to my guard because I have no energy to wrestle. Jeff tries to backstep into a leg lock, but I use my right foot to block him from getting in front of my left knee with his hips. If you've picked up my jiu-jitsu theory course, you'll know that the knees are the second layer of defense. Right now I'm vulnerable to Jeff grabbing my head, and it's essential in jiu-jitsu to never let someone grab your head in bottom position. So immediately, I direct his weight off of me by pushing on his armpit, the end of the lever in regards to the torso. I often use this technique to take backs like you see me do here, but Jeff uses his knee to frame on me and keep his torso high and away from me so I can't gain access to controlling it. So instead I transition to wrestling him by attacking the single leg. Jeff takes a Kimura grip which is a great single leg counter. I'm very at risk here so I transition to the body lock and lift Jeff making sure to direct his legs to the side, his frames away from the mat so he can't stay standing. I often like to use these mini suplexes to take the back. I call them mini suplexes because they're not a full on suplex and I don't know if they have another name. Again I use the chair sit back take to transition to another arm bar and that's the end of the roll. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.